So the we are talking now cause of origin of suffering, right? The origin of suffering. The origin of suffering has a two, um, to the mental afflictions and karma. Uh, today we continue talking on the the mental afflictions, which is origin of suffering. And then also we, Lama Tsongkhapa here talks about ten different mental afflictions. Um, so why not we read like a outline, just briefly reflected on what we talked last time. It says reflecting on the process of circular existence in terms of its origin. How the afflictions arise, this is one origin. Identifying the afflictions, as we finish, there are 10 uh, afflictions that identified it. The order in which the afflictions arises, we're going to do it today. The cause of the afflictions, same. And the fault of the afflictions, also we're going to do today. How you um, thereby accumulate karma. So we see, we can do it today or tomorrow, next time. And then continues and say, identify the karma that you accumulated. So this is the way beginning. It's a, how arises mental ablation. First, identifying mental ablation, we need to know. Same, it's accumulated karma, but what is karma first? We need to know. Identifying the karma that accumulated. Karma that is intention. Karma that is the intent, intended action. Um, how you accumulate karma. Accumulating karma for presence feeling, accumulating karma for the pleasure that comes from enjoying, enjoying desirable object, sights, sounds, and the like, like, accumulate karma for gaining bliss in medit uh, meditative concentrations after you have, um, what called? Rejected. rejected, okay, rejected attachment to external sen sensual pleasure. And it's the accumulating karma for natural, uh, n neutral, right? Mm -hmm. Neutral feeling. Okay, then the, after that, how do, okay, how you die and rebirth. Also, that's part of mm, the talking about origin of suffering. Okay. So, let me briefly re uh, reflect on identifying the afflictions. So, few times, few things are not, um, because I say, okay, I'm just not reading it, right? Mm -hmm. But what I found it, there are a few things I need to explain it. So the first, um, the identify ablation, which is the first, uh, not the first, okay, look at, um, yes, fourth one. <clears throat> right? Uh, let's go again, the third one. It's a pride. Uh, means observing either internally, you know, page 299, mm -hmm. page 299, okay. So, um, internally you ex, ex, uh, or externally qualities that are high, low, good or bad, and I said based on the defying we of perishing aggregate. Actually, this all mental afflictions is based on refining view of perishing aggregate. All mental afflictions. But why only mentioning here with the pride? That's the one thing you need to know, right? <clears throat> the pride is absorbing on our the, the five aggregate and then thinking, I am the best. This is actually the, the observation object take, always takes that uh, our five aggregate. Therefore, it's referring here. Otherwise, Think that all the mental ablation is based on the thing we of uh, preceding aggregate. Thus, you will understand. This is more main self grasping. More explained in the letter, but uh, one more time saying, based on the thing we of the uh, preceding aggregate is not only the pride, all this mental ablation is based on the thing we of that. But why say it's with the, only with the pride because of that? Okay. And then next, ignore, <coughs> ignorance means processing that reflection of a misunderstanding on account of, uh, account of mind that is unclear what's the nature of the for truth, karma, etc. So here translate as a misunderstanding. 
But when we look at the Tibetan, nothing says misunderstanding. Misunderstanding means understand it goes to miss. That's the misunderstanding, right? Nothing understanding. It's just lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. When explained, Lama Tsongkhapa explained in his Lamrim, part of that uh, in Tibetan, there's nothing to say misunderstanding. <clears throat> the last part it says here in Tibetan, um, where is it? Kondo. Okay. It says, Lo misel we mishibin yimojin. Lo miselwa means unclear, right? Mishiba means lack of understand. Lack of understand. It's not saying misunderstand. Misunderstand means something understand there, something knowing there, but it's miss, right? But nothing said that in here. Um, it says more lack of understanding, lack of knowledge. This is the ignorance here. Um, <clears throat> but I think they translate more like uh, what the behind that. So they are nothing completed, a conflict, nothing conflict. You can say that part of ignorance, how Lama Sokopa explained, is a lack of understanding, lack of knowledge. It's not misunderstanding, okay? So the misunderstanding misunderst mis part of ignorance is talking after that, when we talk the Referring view of persisting aggregate. This is the misunderstanding ignorance. This is the precising pre aggregate is one kind of ignorance, but the misunderstanding ignorance it is. But the, above that is nothing say misunderstanding. Okay, in Tibetan say lack of understanding. Uh, you can take that as literally lack of understanding. Okay, that's the one thing uh, I like to share. It yeah. Just just one. Um, clarification. Mm -hmm. So, um, reifying view of perishing aggregates means oh, those are a lot of big words, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it is self grasping, us, that's a short way of saying. For us, we're making real our view that our aggregates, which really are perishing. We make them as if they're not perishing? Is that what we're thinking them as? The, it, the aspect is nothing to do with the perishing. The perishing is part of observation object. You observe a five aggregate which is perishing, right? Yeah. And then you're not thinking it is perishing or not perishing. You're thinking grasping on that. You're thinking um, independent exit. Mm -hmm. The perishing aggregate is talks more part of observation object, both are. <clears throat> Nothing that you're thinking that it's perishing or not perishing, okay? So that part is also ignorance. <clears throat> um, okay, so what are things that um, I just make clear how it says in Tibetan that part of ignorance is not misunderstand, okay? It's lack of understand. Um, one part of it, one side of ignorance talks here. So in general, what, it is also not the root ignorance, okay? Lack of understanding is not the root ignorance. The, um, we have a lack of understand because stop grasping there, the, the root ignorance there. Because it's going to talk, Lama Tsongkhapa is going to talk next time, therefore it's not mentioning here. Um, also, it will be repeated when we talk like a tooling dependent origination, the ignorance will be repeated again. Uh, we can more clear with that. But the line here is you should know. And um, Yes, as we talk here, the, the perishing aggregate, it is, um, uh, yeah, a little bit complicated here, say, which is self-grasping, right? Self-grasping is, could be, say, um, I observed other person's five aggregate and grasping on that, or I mean thinking independent. It's also self-grasping. But it's not that grasping on uh, your own five aggregate. What is the word that I absorb? Observed. 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 Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Um, when we absorbed the other's five aggregate, not all your own five aggregate, others five aggregate, and thinking it is independently exit, 
also considered as a self-grasping. Self-grasping is self-grasping observation objects not always necessary your own part is there. Mm -hmm. Not necessary. So it's part it's also the part of that self-grasping. You thinking you look at the self, one kind of self which is other there and then sees their five aggregate, and sees same time you identify John or Mary, that the other self, and then thinking it's independently active, it's self-grasping. So that gets in the way of having compassion. Mm-hmm. What's that? That would get in the way of having any kind of compassion. An obstacle to compassion. Uh, it is not really obscure to compassion. It's obscure to understand indiv- uh, like a uh, emptiness. Right. Yeah, not compassion. It, it sometimes maybe it more help to more generate compassion. It's real there, you know, real there. I should compassion it. So real suffering is there. Therefore, compassion. If you think more suffering is just merely level, your compassion getting weak, mm. as we are beginner, right? So therefore, seeing as real compassion, I mean real suffering, it help us to com- generate more compassion. There's nothing obscure to compassion, only the for emptiness, view, wisdom. Yeah, so I guess I was, I think I'm the same way. So when we say self-grasping, we mean grasping that that is self-existent on its own side. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're saying it's nothing to do with our five aggregates, it's more to do with thinking that any five Both, both, yeah, any, any, any five, five aggregates. Are self-existent. Yeah, every self. Every self, any self, yourself or other self, yeah. any self could be observation of self grasping object. So now here, the sixth one is saying, refining, uh, refining view of perishing aggregate. That's nothing to do with others. This is the true difference. Here in Tibetan called Jikta, Jikta, right? Um, J E K or J A G and T A, Jikta. And then the self-grasping is we call Dangzin. It's a little bit different, right? Self-grasping is Dangzin and Jigda. Here, sixth one. Sixth one, which is in English say, the refi- refining view of Persian aggregate. This we call Jigda. It's both of self-grasping, but this is only absorbing on your own Tavi aggregate, on your own self, mm-hmm. nothing to do with other. Which one? This one. Jigta. Sixth, Jigta, Jigta. Which is call, calling here refining view of perishing aggregate. Only observed your own five, uh, five aggregate and your own self. Nothing to do with others. And in generally self grasping or dancing could be observed both other self and yourself. And thinking as independent as counted as self grasping. Okay? But if somebody has the view of himself of independent existence, mm-hmm. doesn't he have the same view about every other person? No, no. Object, object is different. When I think iPad is impermanent, I'm not thinking that microphone is impermanent. No, no I'm talking about people, not not objects. I'm talking about if I, if a person mm-hmm. thinks. That is uh, that he has independent existence. Okay, myself. Myself. Yeah. Okay. I think that okay. I have independent okay. existence. Mm-hmm. Isn't it automatically that he thinks that every other person, not microphone, every other person, also has independent existence? If I Same mind, not thinking. It's help you to understand. When you think myself is independent, not independent, as you said, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So That's, mm, okay, okay, okay. So That's, I understand, I understand. So when you well, have wrong view on your five aggregate, exactly, you can have a wrong, you can, you will definitely have wrong view to others. Yeah, yes, 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 it goes there, yeah. So now here, this is two wrong view, right? Self-grasping, and then self-grasping only observing your five aggregate. Different name here. General call is self-grasping. And here it's called referring view of perishing aggregate, jigda, perishing aggregate, aggregate. <clears throat> but other one is not called is pa- uh, uh, perishing 
observing on perishing aggregate, but it is actually, it is. Other self is also the perishing aggregate. My self is also the perishing aggregate, right? But diff giving different name because we need to understand a little bit different there. Now what is different? The every self grasping is not necessary that the revealing view of perishing aggregate. Okay? It's not necessary to be to uh, it's um, it is the refining view of inter, uh, perishing fiber aggregate. But whatever the refining view of perishing fiber aggregate is self grasping. Um, not here. Whatever um, the refining view of perishing aggregate, chikta, is self grasping. But every single self grasping is not necessary because when we look at the other self and thinking independent is self grasping but not the referring view of perishing aggregate because it is not absorbing on your own aggregate. Okay? C2 different. But the, for us, more danger. Who understands? Who understands? You, you understand? Yeah, Richard Health. Can you repeat oh, it? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so what you said was any uh -huh. reifying view of perishing self aggregates is self grasping. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily true that any self grasping is a ra is the reifying view of um, perishing, perishing aggregate. Yes, so yes. But the opposite, yes. Yeah. Why, why is yeah. That? yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Can you give an example. Of yeah. One is like wider the observation object, looking at both ourselves and others. This one is only looking at yourself. But aspect aspect is same. Both the aspect is same. Thinking in independent exits. But the difference is observation object. Self grasping could be observed to self and other self both. The the refined view of the perishing aggregate is only observing on your five aggregate. Nothing to do with others. That's the difference. So the self grasping of the self. Of your own self. Yeah, here is both of my own self. Self grasping is grasping is my own, you know, my one of my mind, and then that view, the referring view, pressure. This is also my mind. Both of my mind, right? Mm -hmm. But both are thinking independent exit. But why is too different? Because both are thinking independent exit, but self grasping sometimes absorbing on other self. Thinking independent exit. The referring view of pressing uh, aggregate is never observed to others. Only, only, only observed in your five aggregate and thinking it's independent exit. Two things here. For us, which is the main root reflection is thinking your own here. This is the main cause of all the truth. The origin, we say origin of Suffering. What is the origin of suffering between these two men is here. The refraining view of the perishing aggregate, which is observing on your five aggregate, thinking it's independent exit. But it's not that your five aggregate independent exit. Observing on your five aggregate and then thinking I am independent exit. <laughs> you, you understand? Mm. I think so. Yeah. So um, when you think five aggregate is independent exits, we are not counted self grasping. Uh -huh. I'll say it's not not say self grasping. But observed on five aggregate, my own five aggregate, then think I am. Because without five aggregate, I cannot identify myself. I cannot find, identify other self. We have to go through by the see five aggregate. When I see recognize John, I have to see past his face. Oh, you are John. That's what I have to say. Without this, I cannot identify. It. I cannot recognize anything. We have to go through by five aggregate. But the real observing is I. But like a vision is sees their five aggregate, 
right? As with my five I get, and then thinking I am actually you looking I through by five I get, and then I am independent agent. That's the self casting. But nothing to do with the I. Only look at the five I get and thinking it is independent. We not call it empty, uh, like a self casting. It's more we call it like a, a phenomena. It's like a ignorance on phenomena. Yet self and phenomena. Self and phenomena. We have two emptiness, right? Mm. Phenomena emptiness and self emptiness, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm also tired. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, sometimes we say self existence table, right? Yeah. Maybe we could say instead inherently from its own side existence table and not confuse it because when we speak about I or me, uh -huh. we say I look at myself. Is independent. If the word self is in there, we get confused with the idea of self grasping something else is independent. Mm -hmm. If we look at the I grasping or me grasping, right? Mm -hmm. I look at my own or anyone looks at their own five aggregates as being independently existent. Then they will look at themselves, or I would look at myself, or whoever is thinking this, would look at themselves as independently existent. Then they would, that would be different than looking at the table. Mm. It is, it is, it is. That's what I'm saying. Because here, if I not clarify on that, you may, you might have a misunderstanding. Here it says the referring view of flourishing aggregate. That's the self grasping, isn't it? <laughs> this is self grasping, but you might think it's nothing. Self, in nothing says self. It's just a perishing aggregate. Mm -hmm. Without aggregate, because self is labeling, labeling or labeling. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the uh, self is labeling on five aggregate, imputed on five aggregate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Without five aggregate, we cannot identify the, any kind of self, yourself or other self. Nothing. So therefore, when you look at the five you get, actually you're looking you and me, I, you, the person, right? So then I'm absorbing my five you get, but more I'm looking I, the sun. And then grasping on I, not the grasping on five you get, okay? When you're grasping on five you get, we not call it self-grasping. Because five aggregate itself is not the self. But when you look at the five aggregate and thinking I is independent as it, that's the self grasping because you observing on self also. That's the two different, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's not you if, if not explain <clears throat> uh, you will not actually Lama Sangha explained it here, it's a perishing aggregate. It's an afflictive intelligence that absorbs the uh appropriate aggregate and regard them as I or mine, right? But really observing on five aggregate, you know, I mean, observing on I through by looking at five aggregate, right? Mm. The, the both are here, the five, you observing on five aggregate, also you observe on I. And this observing these two together and thinking more I is independent. That's a self grasping. Do you think of the I as separate from five aggregates when you're? you're no, that's five. we think. Yeah, that's Actually, it's not. Yeah, that's that exactly we think. Yes, yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, yes, we think I is separate in five aggregates, but also we think without five aggregates, I cannot identify any I and self. Myself and other self, right? It is, easily. Can I make sure I understand? Okay. If, I, if I'm thinking about myself and I see myself as, you know, independently existing, mm -hmm. that's self grasping. If I look at Richard and I think him is Independent. independently existing, that's just self grasping. It is self grasping. It is self grasping. Yeah. Guy I, I see him as self existent, yeah. but I'm grasping onto his self. Yeah. You're looking at his body, but you're mainly thinking he. Right? Okay. Right? You think I'm independent of your projection of what I am, right? You think I'm self defined somehow. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, 
about if you look at yourself as an independent that exists and that self grasping. So uh, explain give me an example of looking at the five aggregates as separate. No. Here I will explain it. So it's a simple way. Simple way when you look at yourself and thinking independent exit, it is self grasping. Okay. Put it in one category. When you look at other self and also thinking independent exit, it's also self grasping. Okay. Um, the self grasping looking at the both yourself and others, right? And when you look at only yourself and then thinking independent exit it's only called that uh, refining view of the pursuing aggregate. It is like a, um, it, it is step grasping, but all step grasping is not necessarily this one, right? The I said it. You know, keep that simple. Uh, that is more easier. I try the example, I try to explain because in this line said, viewing on the pursuing, uh, uh, what's called perishing aggregate, then how come it's I? You know, you might think that. That's why I try to explain. Otherwise, you know, if you leave it simple way, what is different self grasping and then reviewing view of perishing aggregate is different is self grasping is absorbing on both yourself and others. And then the reviewing view of perishing aggregate is only absorbing yourself and thinking, both are thinking independent exit. Oh, that's a, that's a symbol. Yeah, but you said something about the five aggregates being separate. You said that? No, I do not say that's what we think. We think it as a five aggregate is separate than I. Yeah, well, how can you think that the five aggregates, that's what I was asking. How can a person think, if a person thinks that he has self. Look at the words. Look at the words. Huh? Look at the words. You say my body, isn't it? Right. You say my body okay. here and my which is I belongs that body. Already there thinking I is separate who belongs to body. Because therefore I say my body. Oh, my my, my body. body. Right here. So the is that, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you just said that. Okay, that's just like a, I just like to one clear part there on, okay? How do you do that? Uh can you mute? We can hear, um, is there a right note? look at the cursor, the other, uh, uh, your right side. Is there any not the red color? Uh, Click on that. Okay. Not the my one here. Uh, yeah, I just need it. Uh, okay. okay. So now you understand, right? This view which talking here and self grasping is slightly different there, right? Isn't it? Slightly different. Mm -hmm. Self grasping and here what we talk the view. Re referring view of the perishing aggregate. It's slightly different. Okay. Uh, but the main cause of our own suffering it is here. Referring view of the five uh, the perishing five aggregate. So looking into yourself, thinking independent. This is the main cause of uh, suffering. Which is, you know, circular existence. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So regarding mental reflections, yes, these are need to be expanded. Um, the five, can you repeat the five aggregates? Form, feeling, Discrimination, compositional factor, consciousness. Yeah, the only one form is there, other four are just part of mental consciousness. Feeling is mental thing. Form, feel, discrimination. And then the compositional factor. Consciousness. And consciousness. Okay. Uh, uh, I have a, some note here, now I'm thinking we talk separately when we talk like a mental reflection or talk right now. 
it's like actually which part is you know that say angry angry is only mental consciousness or also sensory how many sensory consciousness refer to mental afflictions or how many mental afflictions which is only refer to the mental consciousness that's the one questions and then which mental afflictions are totally non virtue or which mental afflictions are not how many mental afflictions there are none of these like not non virtue or not virtues you know so this uh, there's something in this talk or keep it next time. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a note here. Um, but one thing um, uh, to talk, whatever we have a mental ablation, it's one mental ablation, but there are a lot of secondary mind always together associated with it, right? So, um, uh, okay, just to let you know that when you say even like an anger, but when anger there, in generally, when you say consciousness or mental mind, one mind not not always comprehending every every comprehending object. We're not comprehending by one single mind. There are at least five secondary mind always with the main mind. So there, then main mind can describe, yes, this is blue, this is red color, this is human, this is not human, this is rock. How we describe when we see and describing at the moment, same time, because with the eye consciousness, always there, like a five second mental consciousness, always there, every single time air eye consciousness or air consciousness or mental consciousness or whatever the main consciousness, whatever the perceiving any kind of object, same time there are five are uh, at least five secondary mental consciousness are there. Similar way, when we have like any kind of mental afflictions, which is the mind, all this mental affliction is mind, okay? Mental uh, consciousness things. So whenever we have a mental affliction, at least Again, the four or three there, secondary mind is there. Um, and then adding more on that at the time, uh, how you feel it. Uh, if you feel it, then feelings comes. If you um, like more looking more their detail, then other discrimination minds comes like that. So, okay. Hmm. That's complicated. We just get it. No, no, no. Okay, now uh, this is the. Uh, say it again. Is that true of every single one of the five, or is there one that's not associated? No, no. Always, every single mental consciousness. Every single main mental consciousness, or like main consciousness, right? we have a six main consciousness in it. Every single main six consciousness, always there are five secondary mind, at least five secondary mind there. They are, they are mental consciousness not associated with, they are never, not, not defining that. So always should be there. It's very much necessary. And then, then adding more um, secondary mind, it depends on how, um, how, function it at the moment. Um, giving us like an example to understand also Sam has some mental afflictions also have some kind of that a secondary mind always with it. Um, whenever we see, I, I saw it, that's the only we know, right? So I saw it, that I, how you saw? Blue. Really? Your eyes seeing is blue? Not. Your discrimination mind at same time, the eye consciousness describe it as blue. Then you, it's all come together. Then see, oh, I know it. That's a, that's a how it comes. But you know, okay, that's escape, not the part of talk. Um, okay, now next we're going to talk um, the order in which the uh, uh, the affliction arises. Okay, the order. 
but above that it says, I have explained these 10 afflictions in uh, accordance with the uh, uh, compendium of knowledge, which is Asanga's no, uh, the text, and level of yogic deeds, also Asanga text, and then with the Vasubandhu's uh, explanation of the five aggregates. He followed these three and then talks with 10 root mental affections, right? 10 root mental affections. But the other five, uh, from six, you know, from six to 10. Um, no, it is six to 10 or five to 10? Oh. Sorry? Seven to 10. No, 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 no. Oh, six to 10. It's starting from six to, usually I said six to 10 is, sometimes we count as one, wrong view. But the wrong view divide into the five here. Why? Because these wrong five are more dangerous than other wrong view. Therefore, it's counted like a it's split it the five. Um, but sometimes we say just wrong view. This all wrong view. And then um, each wrong view here we counted five. You should. Look at it very careful, read it very careful, and try to understand clearly. It is because because at there's more danger. This five from six to ten. This five, um, the, uh, what call um, the uh, wrong views are more danger than other wrong views. So therefore, important. And then in this five, the sixth one is the root again. Sixth one is the main, and then comes all other things. <clears throat> mm. Okay, that's the I like to say it. Now go to uh, next the order in which the affliction arises. Arise, okay. One way to look at this is to consider it ignore. Okay, Janet, help me to read it. How far would you like me to read? Uh, this only this paragraph. Okay. One way to look at this is to consider ignorance as distinct from the view of the perishing aggregates. For example, when twilight falls on a coiled rope, its status as a rope will be unclear, and someone may imagine that it is a snake. Similarly, according to this view, the misapprehension of the aggregates as itself arises due to the darkness of ignorance, which prevents clarity about how the aggregates exist. The other afflictions then develop from this misapprehension. On the other hand, if we hold that ignorance and the view of the perishing aggregates are identical, then the view of the perishing aggregates is itself the root of the affliction. Okay, here are two things there, right? One way to look at this, or on the other hand, who's talking this? Who is the other hand? Who is the one way? Um, yeah, we just uh, um, earlier briefly talked about the tenet. So it's a one way. Who talks the first saying ignorance as distinction from the view of the perishing aggregate? It's different. Ignorance is different than this. And what is ignorance for them? It's a, for example, when, to, uh, when two light, twilight. sorry? Twilight. twilight falls on the uh, cold rope at statue, like a more not clear to see. You're not seeing clearly and then you think as a snack. That's the ignorance is, it's like a, just lack of knowledge. Just lack of knowledge. That's the ignorance. So who accepts the main uh, ignorance is, the, okay, now here. One way to look at this, like one part and other uh, other hand to look at it that way. Both are looking. What is the root of mental affections? What is the, all the what is the root of all this mental affliction? Okay, and then the first one are saying root of the mental affliction is lack of education, lack of knowledge. We have a lack of knowledge. Then the um, the what, what called uh, view of the perishing aggregate comes. After that, you know, the first we don't understand. That's how misunderstand all this comes through by the 
No, no, not knowing. Right? Not know is rough. And then many conditions come things and you have a misunderstanding. Same like a not know the what is the reality. You are your lack of understanding what is the reality, then self grasping comes. Right? That's the first number one thing. What is the now root of metabolism is not knowing. Lack of lack of understanding of reality. Right? Okay, I think it is like sometimes it's slightly different. Listen carefully, then you understand. If not, then you will not understand. So here, lack of understand reality is the root of all mental affliction. Therefore, how it arises is first lack of understand reality, then comes misunderstand, which is like a view of uh, perishing aggregate. Then comes anger, then comes like all this attachment or other things, right? Um, but attachment and anger is not necessarily order there. What is really order is lack of understanding of reality and then misunderstand, wrong view. After that, wrong view comes. And wrong view leads that many different mental Could be anger, could be attachment, could be doubt, could be like all this pride and these things comes to that way, okay? So, and then, next one. On the other hand, who is this? Is uh, Prasangika, and then um, like a Dharmakirti. Prasangika and Dharmakirti are saying, what is the root of mental affliction? Is perishing, the will of the perishing arrogant. Means it's, it's like a self grasping Right? What is the root? This is, that self grasping is not a just lack of understanding, isn't it? I mean, uh, better say, uh, lack of knowing, uh, lack of knowing reality. The self grasping is not just lack of knowing, okay? Because it's knowing something. Self grasping is grasping something, knowing something. But it's misunderstand, misknowing, wrong view. Wrong view, that's it. But all this wrong view, um, okay, wrong view is like this. But all the ignorance is not necessary. Grasping on something, comprehending something, or like a perceiving something, not like that. The ignorance, okay, let's say that. Um, but before I explain that, I will just generally describe the ignorance. Ignorance can be two types of ignorance. One, just lack of knowing or lack of understanding. That's the one. And another thing, misunderstand. The misunderstand we call wrong view. Right? Mm -hmm. um, just uh, lack of uh, understanding we call is ignorance. Not really called wrong view. It's nothing to weary. It's don't know, right? It's just lack of. So there are two things here, right? Both are ignorance actually, which is one of lack of understanding. <coughs> yeah, and then this which is not knowing, <coughs> and then a wrong view. Okay. Two okay. things. Okay. Yeah. The example with the coil that you think it's a snake. This is just lack of understanding. Lack of understanding. Yeah. This is a gap, lack of, a lack of understanding. So okay, there's two ignorance there, right? And then the above first one is the the below the Chitta Matra, the below Chitta Matra tenet. Chitta Matra, Sotantrika, and then Vivashakas are talking. What is the root of ignorance? Is the just lack of understanding. They picked up the lack of understanding at, in order the first and second wrong view. That's what they picked up. And then third, other mental relations comes. Right? And then next one is saying opposite. Opposite one. Right? The, all this, um, the root of affliction is wrong view. Or an another way to say self grasping Or another way to say viewing perishing aggregate. Right? The viewing, uh, refining viewing the perishing aggregate. Perishing aggregate. 
this is the first. It lists it lists that um, all these other meta Which one you think is uh, Prasangika, Prasangika, and um, uh, the Dharma Kirti. Dharma Kirti is actually the belongs to Chita Matra views, right? The Chita Matra school. The Dharma Kirti is belongs to Chita Matra school. But still, they talk uh, what is the root of mental abstraction is wrong view, which is self grasping. But mm -hmm. when we say when we say wrong view, don't take all this wrong view, okay? Individual wrong view, which is self grasping. Your view uh -huh. is the what the, what comes first, the the wrong view or the lack of understanding to create the mental affliction? What do you think? Yeah, my analyze after that, I hear two things. I like more that um, the wrong view. Wrong view. Wrong, wrong view is first. Right. Um, with the reason, right? So not they say that it's higher. <laughs> so it's with reason. So, okay. So the wrong view, the two type of saying here, this is the explanation, <coughs> right? Okay. Um, and then sometimes people might think, why not Lama Tsongkhapa just explain his own view, why this complicated making these all these things, mm -hmm. right? Without knowing these two different views, again, you will get more complicated in the future. Mm -hmm. So therefore telling you everything, okay, this is that, this is that. They thinking it is, here thinking it is. Now this is more like a, a practical, this is more reasonable. Let's just say this, right? So, okay. Now you understand these paragraphs, talking two different ignorance, and then two different school, and then what is two different ignorance is lack of understanding and wrong view. What is two different school is the um, so tantrika, vipassika, and one one part of chitta matra which is follow the scripture. These three are talking. Um, the root of mental reflection is lack of understanding. Okay? And above that, the Chitta Madara, which is follow reasoning as a Chitta, uh, 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 like a Dharma Kriti, and Autonomy, and Prasangika, with all this Madhyamika, are taught what is the root of mental reflection is wrong view. Which one is the Chitta? Uh huh. Um, when I read that, yeah, I, I think I have a, a slightly different view than you do, uh, mm -hmm. because, well, first let me say, what, one thing I hear in, in what Dharmakirti and Prasangika are saying implicitly, you know, is like a, a hidden meaning in what they're saying, is that of the two types of ignorance, lack of knowledge or wrong knowledge, mm -hmm. that wrong knowledge is more harmful. Yes. And so when I think about it and I analyze, I think to myself that the ignorance of lack of knowledge comes first, but still wrong knowledge is the root of the mental afflictions. Because the lack of knowledge is, is almost like a, it, almost a sort of blank slate. You haven't gone mm -hmm. a wrong way yet. Okay. You can you can think that way. It's okay. Here I will say lack of understanding not drive you any kind of things. You will be stuck somewhere. It is lack of understanding. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the wrong view. It doesn't matter what people say. It's driving somewhere. Yes. It's more danger that brings you something. Yes. Lack of understanding. It's less to bring you something because you will start it. Yes, we're saying the same thing. Just different words. Uh, say it again. We're we're saying the same thing, but using different words. Because the so that's why I think the oh. I I agree that the wrong view is definitely the root of the mental afflictions because it it brings. Okay, you. I thought you were saying some opposite one. Yeah. Okay. No, no, but but still, I it see. seems that in the order arising in the mind, that before there is wrong knowledge, there's a lack of knowledge. But still, that lack of knowledge is not a root of mental afflictions. It doesn't cause that grasping that the wrong view does. It just doesn't know. Somebody can have a wrong view without uh, having lack of knowledge. You thinking how we study, right? First, nothing knows. Mm -hmm. 
then you study something, then knows. Okay, that is true. I agree. It is generally, but the self grasping wrong view always there whether you learn or not learn from insects to human or higher beings. Naturally there, innately there. No need to learn having self grasping at that. The wrong view. So if say part of that like a language, yes, first nothing no. That's the start. Then doubt. Then clear. Regarding knowledge, yes, I agree that way. First nothing no and then knowing. But the the causing that suffering is not nothing no is not that much causing suffering. It's more causing suffering is wrong view. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a, that's the exactly goes here. But part of educated, yeah, you can think uh, the other ways. Maybe it's easy to understand the difference between lack of understanding mm -hmm. as causing uh, mental affliction compared to wrong view causing mental affliction by the kind of karma it creates, by the kind of karma the wrong view creates. No. Is the, isn't the karma that no. the wrong view creates no. much, much worse than the karma that lack of understanding creates? No. Create? No. Is the same karma? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with the karma. Of course it has to do with karma. Because, <laughs> because, because if somebody has a wrong view, if somebody has a wrong view and it causes him to do wrong action. Wrong, wrong action view, comes first or wrong view comes first? You can have the wrong view that causes you to... to no, which come first? It depends. It can, it can be... Wrong actions come without thinking, any actions there. Any actions there without thinking. Even I want to stand it up, I'm thinking, I'm going to stand it up, right. can you stand it up? Actions always comes after thought, right? Right. So if, if a wrong then, view causes the wrong action, then there is a... Yeah, 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 yes, yes, that I agree. But you said karma arises wrong view. That's I know. No, no, no. But what yeah. I mean by wrong view is I mean the wrong view causes the wrong action and then it causes... Yes, the yes. Action. I agree. I, I agree. It was more dangerous, too. Oh, yeah. I agree. And yeah. And it creates more of a, more of a uh, devastating karmic consequence. Yes, yes, when yes, it, yes. When the root was yes, the yes. wrong view. Then yeah. Then the lack of understanding. That's true. Then wrong view is more dangerous. Yes. Wrong view is more dangerous. I can give simply example here. Some people nothing know, right? Some people know half and half. Half know, half don't know. Who is more dangerous? <laughs> more danger is who know half and half. That's more danger. That's the part of wrong view. Nothing know is not that dangerous. This simple example for that, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. Yeah, that's part of talking about that, uh, how to arise. If you go, uh, if you want more, go with the, like a detail and which is telling you the practice, I would suggest also read the Paponga Lamrim, the Paponga Lamrim, the, uh, the Hand of Pam, or Hand of Pamela, right? Liberation of Pamela. Liberation of Pamela. That book gives you that all this, um, he, Lama Tsongkhapa will teach here more academic way, right? And then Pabonga Lamrim is also explaining that Lama Tsongkhapa more like a emotional way, a practice way to talk. But it is practice actually, right? But for us, nothing feel it. We feel it academically, we're learning it. But we go deep, it is practice that you will understand more in the example and all this behind the explanation. But then what the Pabonga did is, they give more example on each line and then bring this behind all this text in front of us. Then, you know, it is, if you want more this, uh, more applied to practice or more example, you go to look at that um, because it's order is same, go like this. After talk, identify mental ablection, then talks like an order of which ablection arise, talks like that. So, same subject, you will look at. Yeah. Uh, and I think also you, if you have like a Rinpoche's book, like a, a Easy Path, also talks more like a detail like this. Okay. 
uh, what need to know from here is, yeah, this is two more important to know here. Um, and I can, okay. Um, Okay, I got it. Mm. And then one, it's like a how arises. Now here's a first, yes, ignorance. Ignorance leads all to mental patients, right? Um, that's now we're picking the two different... Um, view, I'm picking the next one, the wrong view is more danger. Wrong view leads to all this, um, uh, that mental affliction arises. So then how, there's one thing that I said, like I go to look at the Papangal book, it's very detailed there. And another thing is like a, a Chandrakirti, his Madhyamika um, uh, book, right? Um, Madhyamika Avataranama, that book, it says, how we think we're thinking first, um, you grasping on yourself first, or you comprehending yourself first, I. And then secondly, you you comprehending or grasping which belongs to you, mine. So that's how orders we go. How The first thing is I, right? The comprehending, the I. Then you are grasping or you are clinging to yourself first, then next, you clinging which belongs to you, say mine. Then when you say mine and I strong there, and if someone comes harm, then angry side arises. Some beautiful seeds, attachment arises, and ignorance arises, then other pride and all the jealousy arises because you describe I, clinging on I, and then clinging on mine. That's how it will become. First clinging on I, then clinging on mine, then all this mental ablations comes. This is the one uh, Chantikiti says, I think is more beautiful. And there are more texts talking about that, the order of how arise mental ablations. Whatever, now we have to know here what is the root is ignorance, right? What is root is ignorance, which is self-grasping, self-grasping, which is wrong view. Again, you can say wrong view, self-grasping, ignorance, talking here, right? So, which is the root of all these mental afflictions, and then mental affliction arises, then karma comes after that, yes. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, then next we're going to talk, actually, yeah, do you have any question on that? Yeah. Could you repeat the name of the book by Chandra Kirti that you just talked to about? What's it called? Another chan oh Chandrakirti, sorry. Matiya Mika Avatara Nama. Matiya Mika. Matiya Mika Avatara Nama. I think it's, it is translated in English. Matiya um, Mika. Avatara Nama. I can't understand the last Do you know Vasubandhu's book has been translated? Because I couldn't find it on Amazon. Even the five aggregates? Yes. yes. In English? Yes, it, Ardingal did translate it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've been looking at it. Oh my God. This is, <laughs> this book called, say, the Buddhist science. So the, the inner science. science of Buddhist practice. Say it again. Oh, that one. Isn't that okay. The inner science of Buddhist practice. Yeah, you can note that. That book, yeah. <laughs> It's not really directly talks to the five years But we're beginning, he talks his own practice, Lamrim and this and that. And the end, he translated exactly that uh, Wasubandhu text, five years ago. Yeah. Is it, can I just, sorry, I was in the car when you repeated it. It's form, feeling. Oh, yeah, discrimination. Oh, not discrimination, not perception. No, discrimination. Discrimination? Uh, yeah, describing, yeah, discrimination. Can you discriminate between. Discrimination is like a five-year gap, that she asked me. Is that the secondary line? It's not the 
Discrimination is subjective mind, yes. Sorry, so and then form, feeling, discrimination, consciousness? Compositional, yeah, com consciousness is last, before that is called co compositional factor. Which is also mental formation? Or no, compositional factor has both mental and non associate compositional factor. Yeah. Sometimes the heaps are translated differently. It might confuse people, like the the third, instead of discrimination, sometimes that's translated as conceptions. And conceptions? Then, yeah, sometimes it'll be conceptions in English. I think discrimination, to me, I think is more accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the fourth yeah. one, sometimes uh, some people will say perception instead yeah. of composition. Uh, perception, definitely not. Perception is not. Yeah. Or, or the compositional factor, it's talking about the compositional yeah. factor. Compositional factor, perception, totally wrong, that I clearly say, proudly saying it's wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I agree, but some, sometimes okay. that might be an English translation, so if, you, if people... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, it's not, it's not. You should think compositional factor. No, it's, John, you're absolutely correct, because I just looked it up, because I wanted yeah. to see what it was, and... That's why I, I got two of them wrong. So which one, how would you, which other term would you use, Geshe, to describe compositional factor? Which other term would you use? Other word? Uh, other word? Yeah. I don't know, he said like a perception sometime. No, no, he's talking, when he said conception, he was talking about the discrimination. But what other yeah, word would perception. you use? Perception. Perception, that's what he said. Yeah, but, you, yeah, but, you disagree that composition of factors is No, well, I, I'm going to repeat it here. Form, feeling, discrimination, and compositional factor, consciousness. Okay, so what That's other, all I have to say. What, what, what other words would you use instead of composition of factors? Like, can you explain compositional factors? Oh, okay. <laughs> In, in, within these five aggregates, the compositional factor is the biggest, biggest continuous. Because it, it's there, some, some consciousness there, some non association factor uh, con, uh, uh, there, and then the form is not there actually, right? You know, when we talk about the tenet, I said all these compositional factors divide into three form, consciousness, non-association compositional factor, divide into three. And then form is talked separately in five aggregates, but these two is not talked separately, therefore non-association compositional factor and then all the secondary consciousness are put in the compositional factor. What is do? Compositional factors, some compositional factors do, like it, these are the secondary mind, secondary metaplexions, secondary mind, how secondary mind doing, that's the compositional factor too. Compositional factor means which things produced by cause and condition. That's the compositional factor, right? Let's say here, every impermanent, which we count the five skanda, right? Five peaks or five aggregates, all are compositional factor. This all compositional factor, okay? From compositional factor, taking out the form separately. Mm -hmm. From compositional factor, feeling is taking out the separately. Yeah. Discrimination taking out the separately. Mm -hmm. And then consciousness taking out the separately. All the other left over in there. But why is take separately? Big explanation there, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, the, everything is compositional factor here, okay. It's text from here. All this text from compositional factor. And then what is left over, Giving name is, is become a too num too much too long number, right? So just a compositional factor. One. Hold this all besides this four. All these other compositional factors hold it. What is not on there? All this secondary mental, mental consciousness is not there. Where when say consciousness is not talking at the secondary mental consciousness, it's like a main consciousness. Then Secondary main consciousness are not here. It's all put in this compositional factor. Mm -hmm. And here, not counted like a non-association compositional factor. These are, these two feeling is uh, like a, uh, actually secondary consciousness. Uh, this discrimination is secondary consciousness. This consciousness is main consciousness. Form is here, right? Mm -hmm. 
nothing here, non-association compositional factor. Therefore, non-association non compositional factor is holds on this composition factor. Yeah, tricky. The only the two the secondary minds pull it up from composition factor. The feeling and discrimination. These two is biggest making problem in our life. Pulling up from there. Explained separately. Because it's more to separate to separately sub, uh, more explanation there that would take it out to this secondary mind from compositional factor. And form takes it out from here. Main consciousness are takes from here. And all left over is there in compositional factor. Clear? Okay. Oh, formation, yeah. Sometimes it's called formation, yeah. The compositional factor calls formation. Um, okay, now here, Lama Tsongkhapa continues to explain it, how to arise is, now we know, right? Man, ignorance is the root, and then comes all this mental evolution one by one. How it arises, next line. Janet, can you read it, please? When the view of the perishing aggregates apprehends itself, discrimination arises between self and other. Once you have made that distinction, you become attached to what is associated with yourself and hostile toward that which pertains to others. As you observe the self, your mind also becomes inflated. You develop a belief that this very self is either eternal or subject to annihilation. You come to believe in the supremacy of a view of the self and the life, and you also come to believe in the supremacy of the detrimental practices associated with such views. Similarly, you develop the wrong view that denies the existence of things such as the teacher who taught selflessness and that which he taught, karma and its effects, the four truths, the three jewels, and so forth. Or else you become doubtful as to whether such things exist or are real. Dharmakirti's commentary on the compendium of valid cognition. Once there is a self, there is an idea of another. On behalf of self and other, there is attachment and hostility. All of the faults come about in association with these. Okay, I think this is more explained, more clear than how it arises in the afflictions, right? After if, if, if ignorance, how comes attachment? After, after ignorance, how come um, like uh, anger and so forth? So um, I can put it like a, if you have a question, um, you know, then I can take it. Yeah. So uh, here he said, as you develop, as you sorry, as you observe the self, your mind also becomes inflated. And then he says you develop a belief that this very self is um, either eternal or subject to annihilation. So why why subject to annihilation? Uh, because one believes that if the soul keeps going and going and going, the other one, the other who believes that the self ends when you die, there's nothing after you. Yeah. 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 Yes, uh, subject of inhalation. Um, that's uh, one thing we know that how we uh, think the self is um, uh, the what called the other one's subject of inhalation and uh, yeah. develop okay in, internal eternal 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 or yeah eternal means like more um, thinking independent right. Um, uh, that's the that's the the most of non-Buddhist uh, philosophers think that, and some of our Buddhist philosophers also think that um, the internal self, right? Um, because um, one thing is they everything rely on a substance, and then until they have not found it a substance, they cannot identify anything by name. They, when look at this substance, whatever they found, they think, okay, now it should be eternal. It comes from one self. That's one thing, right? And also, when self-grasping, and then um, other ones, you say, in the, in the lessons, yeah, okay, and analysis means nihilism, right? Okay. 
there is uh, it's not really uh, okay cheta cheper okay hmm was a um inhalation well I, I, I'm just saying inhalation right so it's more not necessary that that word we Tibetan call cheta cheta is not necessary go to like a nothing I guess is also could be um uh what call mm. like the Karma is not exist, right? Or could we say um, Nirvana is not exist? Next life is not exist. Mm -hmm. the, because the self grasping, self grasping. If karma is exist, then cause you problem and bring more suffering to self. Therefore, self karma is not exist mm -hmm. because you're clinging on self. That I think more talks about the other. This is self affliction, the extreme of view. Sorry. The seventh affliction, the extreme of view. Isn't that what this is talking about? Um, it says in, in the extreme of view is an affliction. The afflicted intelligence that observes itself as apprehended by the view of the virgin areas in regards to that self, either as permanent or eternal. Or as okay. So, yeah, let me read the Tibetan. It says here, um, first, you clinging yourself, thinking is independent, and then then you you making separate I and you, right? And then after that you making separate. When you making separate I and you because you clinging yourself as the independent exit, then I and you, then then we and us, then we and us that comes, then uh, it says. Um, uh, and then when we say we, then we have more attachment to I and B and more hatred to you and I, uh, them. And then um, uh, also uh, once you have that hatred to others, then you have, um, okay, um, also it says, also, it lets you have pride in oneself, and and that you know that's the thing. That was also done. You don't do it when you put on the more. And then also said like a, yes, actually saying that that wrong view brings you thinking that eternal uh, and then subject of inhalations. Does your main considering a why subject inhalation through by comes through by the ignorance, right? Because ignorance is clinging on self, mm. then say no karma. Mm. So life is only this, no life, no future life. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Um, the other, do you have any other questions on that before we move to next? Okay. So now talking about the cause of afflictions. Okay. Is there any different cause of afflictions and then how afflictions, order to affliction arises? Do you see it different or same? Mm -hmm. No, no, it's the, the outline say order to, how, how uh, like order to affliction arises, right? It says the order in which the affliction arises, mm -hmm. that's, and then now it's saying, the cause of the affliction. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I say, like any, you see the conflict between these two. Okay. Not, not right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine then. So, <clears throat> it, it counts here six, um, six faults, right? Um, again, Pabonga Lamim explain very well each six cause. Um, the first one is saying the seed of all these mental afflictions. Seed. Until we hold the seed, and then uh, the always mental afflictions is always there. That's the basis? The basis, yes. First one is basis. It's not talking about self-grasping. Isn't self-grasping the seed? 
Yeah, of course. The, you know, self-grasping, we divide into, when we eliminate the self-grasping, you cannot eliminate one at a time. The first number one here, the cause of, um, the first cause, which is basics, is much difficult to, to eliminate it. It also is difficult to engage antidote of this first um, cause. The other f other five are not that difficult, but compared to first. So, and then say, seed. How we break down the self grasping? First, we like uh, reducing the manifesting things. That's the number one. That the self, I'll take like an example as self grasping the uh, self grasping as mental afflictions, right? Self grasping has a seed and manifest it, right? So seed and manifest it, and then also. <laughs> it gets more bigger and bigger. <laughs> let's talk, let's talk. It is important. I, actually, I mentioned it a few times uh, at the class. Also, it has a step grasping here. Imputed, in it, too. In it. In it. Imputed and in it. Okay? And in it. Or like each imputed has two manifested seed. In it has two manifested seed. Okay. Now this is kind of like a four, right? Mm -hmm. But the imputed self grasping are not really counted as a self grasping, but it's part of that. Okay. Um, but first, before we eliminate this in it, we have to eliminate the imputed one. Within these two imputed, we first eliminating manifested one, the man, which just comes comes like a, again and again, manifested one. You have to reduce first. Imputed first. Imputed first. Within imputed, there are two manifested in the seed. Manifested first. The manifested you before you clear it, you have to reduce it. The morality practice is help you to reduce it. Right? Imputed. Imputed. Manifested. Self-grasping. Yeah. And then uh, concentration practice help you to eliminate the manifested things. And wisdom practice help you to eliminate the seed. Okay. Now this is done. The, the imputed things are first. Right? And then second, then, then after that, then we should begin with the uh, Eliminating seed. Seed is not really. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. In it, in it, in it. Okay. Also, in it has a manifested and seed. Mm -hmm. So manifested, reduce it. Again, go like a same morality practice, concentration practice, wisdom. But I'm going to more uh, like a connected with the path. That accumulation path and preparation path. The preparation, accumulation pad is reducing the manifested things, which is in it. Preparation pad is um, like, a, like eliminating the manifested things. And then seeing pad, eliminating the seed of imputed pad, I imputed things. That's, that's a, a, like a, a uh, then, then next, the, from uh, meditation path, as divided into ten bumi, divided into ten bumi because need to be two things here eliminated: in it manifested, in it seed. So, in it manifested can be eliminated by eight bumi. Eight bumi eliminating all single manifested things, in it one. And then nine tenth is um, yeah. Then it makes it confusing. So I think the ten bodhisattva levels, the seven, the first seven, are contaminated. Contaminated. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm talking. Yes, it is. 
So first, can, first stamens are contaminated because it has a, um, like a still host, some kind of afflictions, manifested things. But they're working also at the same time to eliminate the seed of in it. You know, the, the, the ten boomies breaks because the, they need to, actually their main job is eliminating the seed. So while they eliminating the seed, still uh, they hold the manifest at the same time they uh, uh, like eliminating manifest things. And then when the eighth boomy comes, all this manifested and some part of seed is gone, but it's still left over that subtle seed. The subtle seed is eliminating by ninth and tenth boomy. So when the tenth boomy, when the subtle seed eliminated, then Buddhahood. That's how it goes. So uh, therefore, uh, the obst obstacle things, we need to know how many obstacles there are, and then when we try to eliminate, which first eliminating, which first, we have, which is first has to be eliminated, that's the need to know. Uh, otherwise, if you jumped, then you feel, oh, not happening, not happening, then maybe because you don't understand this part, right? The first, reduce the manifested, and eliminate the manifested, clear the seed of imputed, and then in it, reduce it, manifest it by one by one, and it seed. That's how we need to go. And then main antidote is not different. Main antidote is in emptiness. All these mental ablations, all these oxygen, main antidote is emptiness. All this meditating emptiness, reduce it. Emptiness is, is eliminated seed. But even the same emptiness, meditating, some have a power to eliminate seed, some just not. Why? Because the, they are, uh, how, uh, it's like a, the, the, there is not the, um, which can make more powerful emptiness, right? Seeing emptiness as the same, but how come become a, that emptiness more powerful because that, um, that what called merit, accumulating merit, and then because that how you strong generate bodhicitta, that's the depend on. If you strong generate bodhicitta, that much emptiness become more powerful. You seeing same aspect, but powerful and antidoting like uh, eliminating is very much depend on also bodhicitta and merit, the virtues accumulating merit, right? So these two very much support to emptiness make it more powerful to eliminate more seed. That's how it goes. Uh, two wings, yeah. Okay, so um, therefore, here's the seat. This is the basics. Much difficult to um, eliminate that. But as well as you do the below the cost, not that difficult compared it. And also below cost, if you reduce as much as you can it, then no problem to eliminating seed. So this is the basic, and below are, um, uh, how many? Uh, okay, so just count it, or oh, one, two, three, five. Yeah. Okay, so after basis, um, we have objects, which refers to the appearance of objects conducive to the arising of an affliction. Mm -hmm. Number three, we have social context refers to the influence of bad friends and foolish people. Mm -hmm. Number four, explanation refers to listening to wrong teaching. Habituation refers to the process of becoming accustomed to past afflictions. Mm -hmm. And six, attention refers to incorrect attention that projects pleasantness onto what has an unpleasant character conceives an impermanent thing to be permanent, and the like, the four erroneous conceptions that mistakenly consider things that are actually impermanent, painful, impure, and lacking a self to be permanent, pleasant, pure, and possessed of a self. Oh, okay. So now second says here, object, object repair appearance. That's the one thing we do, right? If someone calls you anger again and again, better what you need to do it. Stay away from it. That's the second. You know, this is not a difficult problem, or like a difficult practice. <laughs> right? It's not difficult. 
So, um, like I say, if you go like a movie again and again, like if you want to, if, like I say, like so recently at uh, this afternoon, um, the Gaelic and I watched the soccer play, and then when I look at there, the soccer, the sport. <laughs> When I look at that, the people are um, who win. It's really, what call uh, what call um, <laughs> celebrating? Not celebrating. It's crying. I mean, crying or crowding. They're crying like this. Isn't it? Look at the face is getting red, and like it looks like they really shows their pride because of watching soccer. Because of their win, no, but they feel enjoy it's good. So <laughs> this is you can take example. You know the what the appearance there, and then other side is there. Keep losing, their face is way off. Other side is you know <laughs> shouting. What is it? Excited. Excited or shouting or uh, the. Like crying or crowding, so many things they do it right. They're jumping, um, but this all, you know, inside they're developing pride, anger. The other side, all they developing sadness, worry, jealousy. Right? They're having it because they went to see the sport. If you stay away from watching that sport. That all problems not comes, <laughs> right? So, um, but this is the life we, you know, as we are looking at more ultimate peace or nirvana, then you can stay out from it. But if you're looking just this life feel good, you should go. So <laughs> that's the one example. This is one example to saying. How how much the object is appearance to you, that much you are, you know, and then um, like to go more, right? Right now it's far from me here, nothing to go, right? It's far. If not go, it's okay. If I go, then I like these things and I like that things. How beautiful it is. Attachment grows, right? If I do not go and not see it, if not see it, my attachment will be more slick. I working my attachment going there. That's the second thing. Second things are saying. Object refer to the appearance. So, and then because our our inside mentalization is ready to arise, all this ready for arises, and our like a negative thoughts are ready to arise. When we meet the object, then we describe in thousand things. Or we not meet the any appearance or any nothing object, then. It's, it's still like a remaining as a slave. So that's the next second cause of how we arise this mental reflection or how we, you know, grow. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, I can ask you. Uh -huh. okay. So, from a practice point of view, though, it says, like you said, it's a soccer game, right? Mm -hmm. Don't go. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be a great. Isn't it, though? You go, you go. Uh, opportunity. No, 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 I don't like that. No, but like an opportunity to be able to go and not be, and not have that mental affliction, right? So if you avoid it, don't you miss the opportunity? Here, what I like to say, as you are beginning, as we are beginning, there's no way to go and not have mental afflictions. No way. Better stay away to practice inside. And then will times comes getting more stronger, then you go and then you can change something there. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Not the beginning. No, no, never help. So, um, yeah, there are so opportunities, something good there, but we cannot take that good when we go there. Because our mental vision is too much strong. Yeah, yeah nothing, nothing else. Okay. Better, better stay out with that. Uh, any object makes you anger, any object develop your attractions or attachment or desire, any object that mm, cause you have more, develop your jealousy, stay away. That's tough though. Yeah. Uh, no, because I'm thinking of the dog sounds, right? So, you know, you can 
Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so with your thoughts on this generosity, right, there's um, compassion training, right? But there's a lot of attachment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, here's a technical question. I have no answer about that. <laughs> is, it, it's like soccer. is innate self-grasping a propensity of being human? Is it innate? When it's innate, that means it's in, mm-hmm. inside. Is that... Is that because we're human, or does that have to do something? Because we're not. Uh, there's no I, right? So it's, yeah, it's, it's good that you are um, you compassionately keeping dog. It's very good, right? I never keep the dog. I know. So it means difficult to describe. I do not have a compassion to dog, right? Mm-hmm. I do have a compassion to dog. <laughs> so whatever. Um, this is complicated answering here. <laughs> to so, so, <laughs> so let's forget that question. Okay. And, and no, the, you can forget it or you can think more on that. No, I'm going to think yeah, more yeah, about yeah, it because yeah, I use the yeah. soccer. Because mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give another example, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There's a person who you know who, who's had my car, right? Mm-hmm. So she's suffering, 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 and mm-hmm. she's Anytime now, she only asks me for money. Money, money, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, money. Mm-hmm. And she continues to suffer year after year through, through her choice, right? She has problems with lots of things. So if I ignore her, mm-hmm. it's a lot easier uh-huh. okay. to deal with the guilt of not giving her, like, that guilt of, do I give her money or not give her money? Should I do it one more time or, or not? You know, is that? Uh, yeah, it's, like I say, that's a difficult answer. One more time or do more, I don't know. But I can explain again the next one. Okay. It's more um, refers to also there. Uh, Lama Tsongkhapa says, Lama Tsongkhapa said that the third one, social contact, referred to the influence of bad friends, foolish people. Yeah. Um, the foolish people, bad influence. Like I said, people who are really angry. If you stay with continuously, you will become more angry persons. So, and people very miser, what was stingy, or you will become a stingy if you continue to stay there. And people more difficulty, you will continue to have anger, right? So, that's, uh, it's a, like a, um, this is the cause of mental affliction. We see it clear. Yes, it is cause. It it caused me to have anger. It caused me to have uh, like a, you know, like a. But you can think, it's more help you to generate your compassion, or more cause you have anger. Hmm. That we need to think. Hmm. Hmm. Right. So guilt is what is guilt? Guilt is anger. Guilt is. The guilty. guilty is that- I think guilty is uh, one kind of emotions, uh, not really counted as a mental affliction. The guilty is one of emotion that um, comes from that mental afflictions uh, um, or actions, right? You are done. Whatever. That's what we need to think, because we say I'm doing compassionately. Yes, you very welcome to do it, but think it. More helping or more. Uh, like a harming, right? So harming means not that physic you only harms to you, like a you like a to make you uncomfortable. Harms more things. It harms you to be generate compassion. Very bad, right? Harms you to generate your develop your compassion. Yeah. So in fear you develop your compassion. It's very bad, isn't it? To um, therefore, because you want to be generate compassion, but it co- keep causing you to reduce your compassion, and better stay with it or better stay away from it. Mm-hmm. It depends on how much you need the compassion, how much you let it go your attachment. That's the depend, mm-hmm. right? So therefore, the bad influence, bad friends, or foolish people, it says like a. The foolish people might say, um, okay, why you study it? Just go, fun, 
-hmm. enjoy it. And then as your friend, you cannot reject it. You, you feel you all can let it go. Not study it. Keep disturbing to your study. Keep disturbing to your practice. And better stay with it or better stay away from it. Right? So, and another thing, the whoever persons here, we feel I should be stay with it after we know. Before we know, nothing, isn't it? Before we know, your compassion is not there, your anger is not there. But after you know, and all this there, mm -hmm. yes. it depends on after you know or not know. Otherwise, there are million people there like that lady. There are million dogs there like you take care of. Right? So, think that, then actually it's you. For me, these are not really difficult, the below are. Uh, compared to first, not very uh, difficult to practice. Yeah. Can I ask you a question about this first? Yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. uh, so, so you were saying with the seed. First you deal with the innate, then with the imputed, then with the seed. Mm -hmm. And in each one of them, first you clear the manifested, mm -hmm. then you clear the seed. Yes. Now, it, I can see that clearing the manifested... First reduce the manifested, reduce then clear manifested. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Reduce and clear. Right? Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. see that reducing and clearing the manifested, uh, I can see how can I do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how do, you, how do you deal with the seed? When the seed is left, after you reduce and clear the manifested, mm -hmm. how do you deal, how do you get rid of the seed? In other words, mm -hmm. what do you do to fight the seed? Fight the seed, yeah. apply the antidote. Yeah, okay, so what's the antidote? That's the emptiness. Question. What? Emptiness. Wisdom of emptiness. Wisdom of emptiness. The seed and manifest, we're talking obscured to um, achieving nirvana, obscured to achieving Buddhahood, that's what we're talking, right? All these mental ablections, that's what we're talking. Okay, that main antidote is emptiness. Wisdom of emptiness. Yes. Yeah, meditation before the three wisdom, we need to get it. Wisdom of emptiness, hearing, reflecting, and meditations, yeah. Yes, Judy? Uh, oh, okay, okay. So, I mean, I get stuck in the norm view, but sometimes I get caught up in a far away, like real emptiness. Mm -hmm. But we still can do a meditation. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but meditate on that, how much you understand clear. Mm -hmm. Do not meditate which you don't know. Wasting time because they are nothing gained. So um, that's the therefore it takes more time for understanding. That's what we do, right? But you can meditate. How much you understand? That's the only meditate. It. When somebody has a proclivity, a seed, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. a tendency, a proclivity, mm -hmm. you have a tendency mm -hmm. to something. Mm -hmm. You can have a, a proclivity to many things, mm -hmm. to different things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now there is many antidotes. For other things, if this is an antidote, that's an antidote for this, that's an antidote for this. But here for the seed, you tell me, even though the seed can be many different things, you tell me... No, here mental affliction says we're talking. Self-grasping that we're talking, seed. You could talk about the seed of... Seed of anger, seed of self-grasping, seed of attachment, seed of, you know, this, this are... Yeah, but don't, don't the self-grasping, the attachment, the anger and all that, don't each one of them have See? specific antidotes? Yeah, we do. Antidotes. We do. But sometimes you look at the point, sometimes you're looking like a, here, why is it? <laughs> so here, we do have a specific antidote. Like the anger builds more love and kindness. Individual antidote. But look, meditating on emptiness also helps you to anger and more than this. Okay, so this is more like a great wisdom. Great wisdom. Yeah. So, okay, therefore, now look at the third, it's again continuous here, um, the refer to, in, this is the bad, like a, this is the cause of your arising with your mental ablation. When, when it arises with your mental ablation, at the same time, it's cause for, uh, like a, it's obstacle for your compassion. It's, it's of, uh, be, being obstacle to your compassion. 
because the mental, mental affliction itself is like the anger, attachment, its obstacle to generate compassion. Whoever, the, whatever cause from your friends or whoever, it's rising your mental affliction, you should think it is reducing your compassion. It's not helping you increasing your compassion. Because it's increasing opposite of compassion, increasing obstacle of compassion. Then no way compassion. Only the attachment is left over that you cannot keep it up. <clears throat> but it means not that we totally reject that bad friends and foolish people. It, it means not that. We shouldn't reject it. We shouldn't neglect it. We always hold by inside compassion. As mm -hmm. look at them, you go your home, don't need to be stay with them, and then look at them. Imaginally, you have feeling, then generate compassion and wish more and pray more. You're doing something for them. You are not neglecting, but only you're doing is your eye consciousness, your five senses stay away from there. Your body is stay away from there. Your mental is not. Mm -hmm. So you are mentally always hold dearly, compassionately, as much as you can. And stay away from you know, your body and five sense, stay away from that object. It's help you to generate your compassion or increase your compassion. Otherwise, it's always like a pushing down and pushing down because it rises mental affliction, right? So therefore, you should know that middle way. You stay away from there, physically and five senses, but inside mentally always holds as dear and compassion. Don't give up. Whatever conditions, circumstances come, continues to be held by compassion. But they don't need to know. This is not necessary. They have to know, right? You have compassion. This is not necessary. They have to know, right? It's not necessary. If you're looking, they have to know what I'm doing compassion expecting, condition. This is conditioned compassion. This is expecting compassion. Mm -hmm. This is no need to know them. Just just keep develop yourself. One day will come that you will become more powerful than you can face it. You can face on that. You can come close to them and help. Not today. As well, you're weak. So that's the Third, number third, how to do practice, uh, that is saying. And then explanation refer to listening to wrong teachings, not only listening to wrong teachings, reading wrong, wrong book. What it means wrong is depend on what you're doing again. Otherwise, very difficult to define is what is wrong and what is right. Right? It's depend on some, some wrong is depend on something right. But what he is saying wrong, listening and wrong teaching, which is, again, uh, like a cause you arise your mental afflictions. That's just wrong teaching, because we don't want it. It's connected with the rising mental afflictions, right? So, like, if you read continuous, like, a fighting things, fighting things, again, right? If you read continuous, like, a, a what called um, the, the book of sexual things, then your attachment and desire grows. Um, and then something, something there, right? So therefore, wrong teaching and wrong book. Stay away from it. Better not touch it. But if it's not affect you, any book you're reading is not affect you. It not increase your attachment or jealousy or anger, so forth. Any kind of mental reflection, then we will not see its problem, right? Until it's affected you, better not touch it. This is, is this difficult? <laughs> not really difficult, right? This is not really difficult. Um, okay, now it's fifth. What called? Habituations refer to the process of becoming uh, what? A custom, what? Like a habit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay how you become a habit, how how become an angry person, 
how become an attachment and desire person, how you becoming like a, a jealousy person, because you meditate on anger, because you meditate on attachment and so forth, right? What means meditate on anger and attachment? Do you understand? Not habitude. It's meditating it makes you habitude. Habitude not makes you that meditating, right? Feeding. Meditating. Sorry? Feeding. Feeding her anger. Giving it how are you feeding your anger? Oh, how? How, yeah. By, you know, keep coming up with reasons why, why. Yeah, you keep thinking the reason. Mm -hmm. Right? Someone criticized you. you repeating 100 times that blaming word in your mind. Even their actions. You're meditating on anger, right? It only grows your anger. But sometimes we not notice that. It's naturally, it comes like a thing that way, right? And then say, how beautiful it is. How much you describe it is beautiful. That much makes your problem being separate with it. Because attachment grows. You see, you're meditating on attachment. That's often with you, right? So how beautiful is this car? And then come back and keep thinking, it is beautiful. Look at the head. Look at the behind. Look at the color. Look at the size. Look at the shape. Each we describing how beautiful, how beautiful. You, we adding. This is analytical meditation, right? Mm -hmm. We analyze meditating on the beautiful. But when we say analyze on compassion, how? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> analyze on car, yes, how beautiful it is. <laughs> so, and that only goes your attachment. Then, one thing's attachment danger is one get damaged, big problem, nothing to get it to you. You will try many different ways, even you kill someone, even you steal it to getting it. It's that much attachment as well, right? And being separate, you might suicide. That's the attachment's result. Because you, you keep describe how beautiful it is. So, therefore, Limited, describe limited, and not over described it. So our mind over described it actually, isn't it? See, one thing's beautiful, you like it, then you over described it. Described it. That's attachment. That's that's the. Then you become a more happy shit. So right when you, when we're young, maybe not that much anger. Then somehow you get anger and you keep thinking and keep thinking and keep thinking when you become a more uh, adult or more senior. Your habit is more with anger and then therefore even small reason you get anger, which you not had any before. You will get anger because you keep keep it or you it's your habit now. Because you develop it, because you uh, meditate on that. This is the cause. This is the cause of um <laughs> arising mental afflictions, not meditating on any um, that cause you arising mental afflictions, right? Um, and then third one is here, number one, and number two, and number six is more danger to develop the mental afflictions. Number one, number two, number six. <clears throat> Okay, so number six is, as I said, over describing, right? What it says in Lama Song over here, number six. Attentions refer to incorrect attentions. Incorrect means like a, you see beautiful, now you're adding more, right? So, um, you know, <laughs> okay, it's happening with the people. Um, <laughs> One of my friends, um, his girlfriend has a, some kind of like a hair damage. He never sees until two or three years after. <laughs> oh, oh, <really? laughs> How come he's there? <laughs> never notice because he describes how beautiful it is. It's blocked to seeing this. And you know, after three years, you know, that <laughs> outcome, then he's seeing, oh, you're yeah, damaged. <laughs> so funny. Okay. <laughs> so that's happening. It's like a, if we describe overcomes, over describe, then so many things we are not seeing. Right? And then that's 
it really cause you have anger or whatever. If like a will, I I take a some more attachment, but anger is sin. If you over describe how bad these people is, you know, this you know they, these people like you throw one rock in your yard, and then you describe this person is hundred percent bad. How come this is that? That's one thing we first think. How come he throw in my yard? Second thing, mm -hmm. right? How they throw it? You look at the, all these actions, the third things, and then you're thinking more and thinking more. And finally, you will see this person, 100 person is bad. And whenever you see, whenever you think that kind of things, manifests anger. So these are the, do not over describe it. Right? Do not overthink. Just try to think what it is. Not over. So this is the what's the way danger of cause and then oh, okay it's nine now. So here it's not counted in this six cause, but in Vinaya text, uh, like other four cause they are like a uh, um, not not um, which you don't understand. It's the same like a lack of under lack of education, lack of knowing. It's also can be cause of mental afflictions. Ignorance is cause of mental afflictions, right? Mm -hmm. And then also, power um, member is what say, power, uh, is careful, careless. Careless is also cause of um, arising mental afflictions. And careful. What it means careful and careless? In Tibetan, say, power is careful and power is careless. But the careful is more attention like that. Um, as I earlier give you an example, like a, in one part, put the, the very hot oil and put it in your head and say, okay, you go 10 steps from here to there. So every second, how much your mindfulness in here? That's the careful I'm saying here. So this is needed really careful. The careless is like a cause of mental afflictions also. And then, um, Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the and, the, and then um, uh, we say disrespect. Disrespect means whatever it says, it says. I don't care, right? Like it's more, you know, it is causing. Otherwise, it's more excuse yourself without any reasons. Oh, I know it drives me attachment. Okay, whatever. Today, let's go. This is danger. Um, I know it's like it makes me more jealous, but it's okay. The excusing yourself again and again, again and again, that danger for arises all these mental persons. Every single not excuse, never excuse. It's okay right now. Yes, tomorrow it's okay, and to the devil it's okay. Ten time okay, hundred time okay, and then what is which is not okay then? So. This is uh, the cause that I'm little bit adding from uh, other, and then here a few different text calls, talks about the cause of mental afflictions. Okay, whatever. So now read more the Pavanga text if you have it, and then uh, try to put it at apply in the practice. Which text? Uh, Pavanga text. Oh, that's uh, right. Uh -huh. Okay. No, the other one. Art did translate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so still I cannot, but the, here um, the, what's, what the third one is saying, uh, the fault of affliction, again important, I think very important to reflecting on fault of impo uh, like uh, uh, afflictions, you know, this is important. So I just uh, didn't mention it, here Lama Tsongkhapa mentioned like 17 different type of fault of afflictions. You go one by one, give example, reflect it on that, right? Contemplating on that. And then um, the book that uh, Maitreya Buddha, it's also, also said in here, um, uh, the ornament of the Madhya, uh, uh, Mahayana Sutras, ornament of Mahayana Sutras mentioning 14 different type of faults, 14. You, you find it out, okay? 
14 different kind of faults, but some are similar than 17, which Lama Tsongkhapa mentioned. And then next, Shanti Dewa text. So these are the saying how it's like a, like a Lama Tsongkhapa mentioned 17, and then ornament of Mahayana Sutra mentioned uh, 14. These are saying how many fold there? It's a lot of fold. And then next, Shanti Dewa text. Like there are like five verses there, but the, actually they're talking, uh, six verses there, actually talking five different calls. But these calls are talking how long we hold it, how long harms to us. You know, the first one is how many fall there. And then Shanti Deva text talking how long harms to us that mental afflictions. That's uh, all this you should analyze it. And it's really, uh, yeah, important. And then at the last, um, again, taking example as uh, one of Katamba Master Gombawa and how they think it. So this all talking about the fault of mental ablation. And especially if you look more like a Chandi Dewa text, uh, I think Constitution chapter and then um, chapter that fourth and fifth talks a lot of fault of mental ablation, more than six. Actually, the sixth chapter talks more patience, right? But the fault of mental affliction talks more on the fourth and fifth and seventh. Seventh is concentration. No, no, no. Uh, oh, you can eight, eight. eight is yeah, concentration is talks. These three chapter talks more about the uh, fault of mental affliction. This, that we can um, read it, right? So, and then, yes, it's important to reflect on that. Even books that that, you read it 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, and think it. As I say, okay, your homework, your homework, you can say, okay, I said, Lama Sokoba mentioned 17, find out, write down all these 17, okay? And I said, like, uh, um, the ornament of Sut Mahayana Sutra, which is made here, uh, with a song, it talks like a 14 different type of fault. Write down all these 14, bring it next Tuesday class. Where are the 14? Ornament of here, they call the, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, furthermore, as the ornament for the Mahayana Sutra. You see that, right? Where it's like a page three, page 301. Okay. And then fivefold from Shanti Deva text. Find it out the fivefold and write down. 17, 14, 5. Okay? 14, 5, and then bring it next time. It's good homework. <laughs> okay. Buddhist of our way of life has uh, like a six verses there, but talks only the five fold, which is more like a longer harms. Okay. That's it? So I'm going to read all. Janet always complains. Why well, not read the whole text? Prayer, right? In this land surrounded by a mountain of snow, you are the source of all sloth and joy. All powerful channel six in Jinjaso, please remain until Samsara ends. To bring blessing of enlightened activities of Fujian disciple and to spread the textual and inner realization teaching of the Buddha, who embodies the ten power, you show the light of logic in teaching to intelligent mind. Oh, I pray to you, our spiritual guide, reveal of the path. May the precious Supreme Bodhicitta arise in those in whom it not had arisen. And where has it arisen? May it not decrease, but ever increase more and more. I dedicate this virtue as a cause of gaining a true understanding of the soul meditation, medicine that dispels all illness or grasping at the extreme. The profound meaning of dependent origination that is free from extremes 
and the view of the Supreme Arya Nagarjuna and his spiritual successor. By this virtue, may all beings perfect the accumulation of merit and wisdom and achieve the two holy bodies that arise from merit and wisdom. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you. <laughs> okay. If you have a time, I can take one or two questions. If you do not have a time, then you can leave. Yeah. Do you want to stop the recording for the questions? Uh, if they have a question on online, that's welcome. Sure. <laughs> Any questions online? No, I don't think so. Not right now. Okay. Good, Thank good. You. No pause. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't force to have questions. <laughs> Don't force. <laughs> it's because his time comes. Okay. Um, okay, that's fine then. Thank you very much. <laughs> have, a, have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you, Gessler. Good night. Good night. Uh, Gloria, you turn off. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you,